let's compare a plastic injection molded sprue to a 3D printed miniature in resin. Now my next commission will be using this piece and I wanted to show it to you guys, take this opportunity to compare the two. Because a lot of people are very excited about the potential of 3D printing miniatures. There's a lot of advantages to it. But I also want to kind of do a reality check with people that may think that uh, it has already made plastics obsolete. So the advantages to 3D printing is that you can 3D print an infinite number of things um, theoretically. Take a 3D sculpted miniature, um, and depending on the artist, if they can set up their printer correctly, if they choose the right resin, you can get some really amazing detail. Like, for example, this piece here is a sort of owl dragon creature, and I will post up pictures of the 3D miniature, and the artist I will link in the description. This was on Etsy. Now, from an artistic standpoint, if I were asked to sculpt this piece in green stuff, I would have to make the armature, I would have to do lots of layers, sculpt it out, it would take some time, uh, a lot of time, whereas this can simply be printed off, right, cheaply. There are also aspects of this creature that would be a pain to sculpt, like these spikes here. Is it doable? Yes, but these quills and these spines and these feathers are detail that would take uh, a traditional artist quite some time. The difference being, though, is that the definition and the resolution would be a lot tighter. Okay, so you have spines and quills here. Those look really good, but as the detail comes down under the throat and down here, it gets lost. Okay, the resolution resolution is just not sharp enough. Um, the face is supposed to have some feathers, and the little beak there is lost in the resolution. Um, depending on the 3D printer and the material used, you can get really, really tight. Um, and that, that's great, uh, but that, that also takes someone that really knows what they're doing when they're setting up the printer. It takes a lot, of, uh, a lot of trial and error to get it right. Also, with a lot of the resins, um, there can be printing issues. Uh, people are excited about 3D printing because it's so cheap and so fast. That's great, except with that expediency, you also get little uh, imperfections like bubbles, right? These little pock marks. Okay, um, there's also malformations like on the toenail here is not straight. I'm going to have to probably rebuild that. Um, and so there are advantages to, to the resin. Absolutely. If, as long as someone can get their recipe right and their dimensions correct, uh, it can be fast. However, is it ready to replace molded plastic? No, absolutely not. And to be honest... I think it's going to be a while before it is, it's there. This is a, a piece from Games Workshop, and look at the detail, and it's consistent. If you were to print off uh, 1,001 of these resin sculptures, okay, 1,001 of, one, ones of these, um, every copy is going to have its own um, anomalies, its own mistakes, its own um, imperfections, which can be corrected, but they are what they are. Whereas you can print off a thousand one of thousands of these, thousand copies of these, and every one of them is as long as they have the the molds are intact, and um, and the materials are consistent, it the pieces are going to be near perfect to each other. Okay, um, and that is the benefit of setting up a very expensive, very labor intensive um, mold specifically for this piece. Uh, the reason that these are so expensive, guys, and you can argue that G Games Workshop is um, charging a premium. Um, also, these are premium miniatures. If you compare them to other things that are on the market, you have to give them credit. They have to first pay a conceptual artist to design them. Then an artist needs to design the actual piece in 3D. Then they need to figure out how, how the sprue is going to match so that it's, um, it's, it's conducive to mass production. They have to pay for those molds. It's very expensive. But in the end... The process is worth it because look at the tight detail that you can get on these miniatures. You have to admit that the, the latest stuff is really good, okay? And if you've seen the Indomitus miniatures that came out, people are raving about them. Instagram is full of those m miniatures because they are undeniably fantastic, okay? The, the quality is fantastic. Is this fantastic? Um, 
for our time in this emerging technology, it's exciting. Uh, however, um, if they had made, if this piece were to be in plastic, like a lot of the creatures that Games Workshop makes, uh, none of these flaws I, uh, would, would have to be dealt with. But instead, because this is resin, yes, it was inexpensive. Yes, it was fast to print. Yes, there are things that are uh, super easy uh, or uh, that are already pre-made that would be very, very labor intensive to build. Um, but the joints don't, don't match at all. I mean, this is, this is going back to cast resin from the guys that remember those times. Remember the fine cast from the GW transition period and a lot of, uh, resin miniatures even today, uh, have these issues where this, this joint does not fit at all. And if I try to make it fit, there's going to have to be some substantial gap filling and pinning is going to be a problem with these small little areas like this antler. Okay. I'm going to have to pin this in place which would be fine if this were plastic, except that resin is very, very brittle. Okay, so yes, it's cheap. Yes, you can reprint, but it's brittle. Okay, so it's kind of a pain to work with. All right, and you can easily, easily sabotage the whole piece. Case in point, I went to a local uh, shop recently, and a friend of mine had printed out a miniature um, in very similar resin. He showed it to me, he was very excited, and I had to admit the resolution was really good. Uh, but he handed it to me and immediately um, I snapped off a little piece because it was my first experience with this type of material. And he laughed and said, you know what, that was 15 cents to print, don't even worry about it. And I said, me, who's used to things being more expensive because they um, are of a different material, it's handmade or whatever, I, I felt bad. He, he just threw it in the trash and said, you know what, don't worry about it uh, because he'll just print another one. So yes, they're cheap and you can reprint them, but they also can break. They're not as easy to work with. Okay. So that's a look at plastic versus 3D printed. 3D print printing is very exciting. There are advantages to it. It is not ready to replace, um, to replace plastics. Okay. It will get there one day. It may be a little while. Um, but this isn't even ready. I would argue that this is in some ways not even ready to replace cast resin because of the anomalies that can happen. Okay, we're, we're close to that, but not close to replacing plastics. All right, there are issues with resin, whether it's, whether it's 3D printed or cast, that uh, are not, um, that we need to get past first. Okay, so that's just a look at, at uh, cast, or excuse me, uh, printed resin versus um, plastics. Many people are talking about um, how it's making these irrelevant. Uh, we're not there yet. And from a converting, um, sculpting, and building perspective, I would take this every single time. Matter of fact, when people approach me with projects uh, using even Forge World resin, um, there's just so many imperfections and things that, and inconsistencies in the material and things that need to be fixed and circumvented and rescaled that uh, it's more, it costs more to use a resin miniature at times than just use plastic. Is this cheap initially? Yes. Until you start to try and convert it because then you need to fix all the problems and it ends up being labor intensive and almost as expensive as just using a plastic kit. So, um, I hope that was a, an interesting look. Um, just a quick video and a comparison for you guys.